Hey, everybody. Hopefully you can um, hear me and see me okay. Um, we've been having some storms and uh, some bad weather where, I've, where I'm at, and so hopefully this video doesn't get cut off. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that just in case we get cut off because, um, you know, we've got some bad weather going on today. All right, let's invite our guest in. Hey, Kia. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. Um, I just, I'm going to read a little bit of your bio for everybody and then, um, you know, then we can get into it. Does that sound okay? Okay. Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, so Kia has been working in the health field for 20 years. She um, is a dental hygienist, and she's been helping uh, adults and children improve their oral health, but she wanted to pursue um, health and wellness outside of the dental office, and so she became a certified Utego. Did I say that right? Breathing instructor? <laughs> Utego, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and she's mm -hmm. currently pursuing a certification in holistic nutrition. Um, and Kia works with women who struggle with anxiety. Uh, so they are able to take back control of their lives. So that's really interesting. And so Kia, I just, the first thing I want to ask you is like, how did you get into this um, type of breathing? Like what made you want to, pursue this certification and start um, pursuing this career? Well, it started because, uh, like you said, I was just kind of ready to do something different, just to be outside of the dental office. And I um, had heard about a course that dealt with breathing um, disorders and how it affects growth and development. And so I took some courses in that, and then that kind of led to the Boteco breathing. I heard about um, a man named Patrick McEwen who teaches Boteco breathing. So I got uh, certified as an instruct instructor through his course. And um, it's called Boteco breathing because it's named after a Russian doctor whose last name was Boteco. And he realized that he basically studied with his patients their illness and how it related to their breathing. And he noticed that the sicker his patients got, the worse their breathing became. It, their breathing became really labored and, you know, very heavy and fast. And so he wondered if, if we change the breathing, can we also change, you know, the, the illness? So he noticed that when, he, when patients started breathing less or changed their breathing, that their illnesses got better. And he even saw that happen in his own case because he suffered from high blood pressure and I think he had bad headaches also. And he was able to reverse that by changing the way he breathed. That is so interesting. Okay. I like and that. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> what are some common symptoms of like stress and overwhelm and like why are more and more people experiencing that do you think like what's your opinion on that well i mean i mean there's so many things <laughs> these days that can cause us stress i mean being in a pandemic for what seems like an eternity <laughs> has been stressful <laughs> and you know sickness and pressures at work and, you know, family issues that we might have and worrying about our jobs and money and even social media. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that can cause us to be, you know, stressed out and it can manifest itself in so many different ways. Like some, some people, like when they're stressed out, they lose their appetite. Other people just want to eat everything. Right. <laughs> and some people mm -hmm. might deal with thoughts that just race or exhaustion, or maybe we can't sleep or we have, you know, digestive problems. Those are all symptoms of, you know, stress. Yeah. It can come out in so many ways depending on the person. And mm -hmm. yeah, so true. And things that we don't even relate to being, you know, stressed out. Like you said, like, 
um, yeah. you know, digestive issues and things like that. Like a lot of people don't even realize it's because of stress. So, yeah. Yeah. True. For sure. Um, so what will happen if we don't address our stress? Like, um, you know, when people start experiencing, is that when people start experiencing burnout like if they just don't deal with their stress and they just keep letting it go and go and go and not try to do something about it for sure yeah burnout can definitely happen um if we don't get our stress under control and there's you know there's acute stress which is temporary um like we might stress mm -hmm. out over a presentation that we might have or Maybe we're just walking in our neighborhood and this dog comes out of nowhere and starts barking and growling at us and, you know, we get stressed out a bit. So, I mean, it's a natural response that happens when we are in a challenging or maybe a dangerous situation and our body goes into that fight or flight mode, you know, that sympathetic um, system takes over. So our body releases adrenaline and cortisol and our heart rate increases and our, you know, blood pressure increases and we start to breathe faster and heavily and, um, you know, we become more alert. We're aware of what's going on around us. We're super observant. We might feel tense or we might, you know, start shaking. But when the presentation's over, when the dog's gone, our body, you know, goes back to normal. If that sympathetic mm -hmm. system gets turned off and then that rest and repair, the parasympathetic system takes over. And then, you know, our body goes back to balance. But when we have chronic stress, that fight or flight mode never gets turned off. We're always, <clears throat> excuse me, our body's like always on high alert. And it puts a lot of pressure and stress on the body. And over time, it can be very damaging physically and also emotionally. So we can end up with depression, anxiety, you know, high blood pressure, heart attacks, diabetes, weight gain, mm -hmm. you know, problems with our memory. And a lot of times when um, people deal with chronic stress and what, you know, or, um, can lead, which can lead to burnout, a lot of times they just feel like they have no control. They might have no motivation at work or at home. They may just feel exhausted. And, and in extreme situations, it can even get to, to the point where they might have suicidal thoughts. So it can be very, very, you know, dangerous and harmful. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is we need to be dealing with that, you know, probably exactly. on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, for sure. So I guess um, my next question is, like, can you, can you give us some, like, practical tips to start combating our stress, like things we can do that um, – don't require a lot of skill or a lot of time, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is like one of my favorite topics. I probably could talk about this all day <laughs> about like how to <laughs> combat stress. But I mean, <laughs> some things we can do is just for one thing, making sure that we have a healthy diet, which I know you talk about often. Um, just, you know, making sure that we eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, that we're eating whole grains and, you know, that we're just taking care and nourishing our body and we don't want to treat it like a garbage can. So we want to make sure that we are doing what we can when it comes to what we eat to, you know, give our body the best nutrients that we can. And then another thing is making sure we get adequate sleep because that definitely affects our emotional state. And I feel like one thing that's very helpful is having an evening routine. And so mm -hmm. for me personally, at nine o'clock, I like to shut down iPads, laptops, silence my phone, and just turn on some soft lighting and read a book, drink some sleepy time tea. And that's like my time to just kind of relax. And then at 10 o'clock, it's mm -hmm. lights out. So I feel like having that routine mm -hmm. has really helped me make, making sure I'm getting enough sleep and that I feel good in the morning. And then if we have a good evening routine, it helps us to have a good morning routine and just taking the time. I mean, it could be whatever you have 10 minutes, 15 minutes so that you're taking time for yourself before you have to, you know, 
help other people in your house, whether it's your kids or your husband or before people want anything from you, that you take the time to kind of take care of yourself. So that could be, you know, yeah. journaling, praying, you know, doing whatever it is that is just time for you. And of course, we want to make sure that we exercise because that really does um, help us, you know, emotionally, physically, everything. Um, and just, that could be as simple as just going for a walk outside. You know, nature has such a calming effect on us. So doing those things are very helpful. Definitely. Yeah. And I want to go back to what you said about, you know, the food part. Don't you think that like if you're eating a lot of processed foods and a lot of and you're not eating a lot of whole foods, don't you think that can make your anxiety and your stress level worse? Like that's been my For experience. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. when I eat, I just when I eat a lot of out. sugar. Yeah, when I eat a yeah. lot of sugar and processed foods, I've noticed that it definitely affects my mood. I'm more irritable, for one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I feel, yeah, I just, I just don't feel good. I never feel good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so why is the way that we breathe so important? Is is it stress? Is it mental health? Does it, um, what why is it so important for us to be breathing correctly? Because I know a lot of us aren't breathing correctly or we're not breathing it like enough, you know. That's true. Yeah. So the way we breathe affects all of our body systems. So even when you breathe just a little bit faster, it increases your blood flow. Mm -hmm. It increases your heart rate. But if you're breathing fast and you're breathing with your upper chest, it often leads to a racing mind. And the opposite is true too. If we have a restless mind, then it causes us to have fast upper chest breathing. So <clears throat> conditions like asthma, gastric reflux, panic attacks, snoring, sleep apnea, even skin conditions like eczema can, and poor concentration, all, that, all those things can um, relate to how we breathe. So to have optimal breathing, it's really important that we breathe through our nose and not through our mouth. And most people, like I've asked people like, hey, do you, are you a mouth breather? And nine times out of 10, they say no, right? Because when you think of mouth breathing, I, I usually think of like Napoleon Dynamite, if you remember that movie, <laughs> and how it's just kind of like, when you think of people that mouth breathe, you think of their mouth just being like, <laughs> like a wide open, like with kind of a vacant look on their face. But in reality, most people who mouth breathe, it's, it's not that way. Usually their mouth, their lips are just a little bit parted. And they don't even realize mm. that they breathe their mouth a lot of times because they're just, they've done it all their life. So they don't even notice it. So I usually tell people, just notice how you breathe. Notice is your mouth open even just a little bit during the day. So that's one thing. And then when we breathe, we want to make sure that we're um, breathing from our diaphragm and not our upper chest. Mm -hmm. So we want to breathe with our belly. And then we want to breathe less, which might sound kind of weird, but a lot of people over breathe. And so if you breathe through your mouth or if you can hear yourself breathing when you're just resting, not when you're exercising, but when you're just resting, if you can hear yourself breathe, if you sigh a lot, or if you take big breaths before you talk, or if you breathe heavy at night and you wake up like with a dry mouth, those are all signs that you could be over breathing. And the reason why um, that's important is because if we're breathing too much air into the lungs, then it reduces the amount of oxygen that goes to our tissues and organs. And that includes our heart and our brain. So the way to get more oxygen through the body is to breathe lightly or even breathing a little bit less for short periods of time. And that allows mm -hmm. um, the air that we breathe in to gather with uh, the nitric oxide that's made in our nose and it allows carbon dioxide to accumulate in the blood, which causes more oxygen to flow throughout our body. So it's really important that we breathe correctly in order to get as much oxygen as we can to our heart and to our you know, brain and to the rest of our body. 
Wow. I didn't realize there was so much to, you know, our breathing and stuff. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, I feel like it's one of those um, things we take for granted. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, you know, I I guess through like my yoga and meditation, I, I've learned, um, you know, how to breathe better and everything. Um, but I like that. Um, mm -hmm. The box breathing or the, you know, you uh, breathe in real deep and you hold it for a few seconds and mm -hmm. then you breathe out. That makes me feel so relaxed. Yeah. And so that's one of my favorite things to do, you know, especially when I feel stressed. So, yeah. 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 It does make oh. you feel more calm for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so can you... Can you take us through some of the, like, um, breathing that you do, like a couple exercises that we can do, like, daily um, to help, you know, with our stress and to breathe better and breathe the way that we're supposed to be? Yeah, sure. So um, there's one exercise that we can do, which kind of helps to, you know, activate your relaxation response. Um, so. I guess we could do it for about maybe 30 seconds. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah. So let me set my, I'll set my timer here. So um, with this exercise, it's, I think it's helpful. You want to make sure that you, first of all, that you're sitting up nice and tall. And mm -hmm. it's also helpful if you put your hands like where your ribs are. Because that way you can make mm -hmm. sure that you're breathing, you know, using your diaphragm and not your upper chest. So we just want as minimum breathing for their upper chest as possible. And we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we're doing it slowly, that we're breathing in slowly and breathing out slowly. So we're going to inhale for five seconds and we're going to exhale for five seconds. Okay. So I'll count it off. I'll just say in two, three, four, five, out two, three, four, five. All right. So I'm going to okay. start it. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. In two, three, four, five. Out two, three, four, five. In two, three, four, five. Out two, three, four, five. In two, three, four, five. Out two three, four, five. All right, that's it. So that one's just good to, yeah. it kind of stimulates our vagus nerve, which tells our body, okay, you need to chill out, just relax. <laughs> so it kind of slows your heart rate. Yeah. And so it's good to do that just for a couple minutes, just to, you know, kind of just relax. And then there's another exercise we can do, which is also good when you feel stressed. And it just helps to, you know, slow down your breath and our heart rate. And in this one, you're going to breathe in for four, a count of four, and then breathe out for a count of six. So slow breath in and then slow breath out. So we can do this same, this for 30 seconds also. And okay. let me start the timer. Okay. In, two, three, four, out two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, so just doing that, like in for four, out for six, so that our exhale is a bit longer than our inhale, helps mm -hmm. to just kind of relax us and then take it down. So just doing that for a few minutes, two, five minutes, two to five minutes, however long you have, 10 minutes, just mm -hmm. to kind of just relax is very beneficial. Okay. That first one, I caught myself being more of a chest breather and I had to like, you know, I had to think about, let me breathe with my belly, not my chest. So, yeah. 
It's true. Yeah, but I feel like it, I it takes some practice because. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I just you know I guess as you um, practice it more and more, that becomes easier to to start. You know, doing that naturally instead of having to catch yourself. Yeah, that's why I feel like it's good to start like when you're first starting to practice to have your hands on your side because it forces you to like, okay, let me make sure I'm breathing with my belly. But yeah, it's common like when you first start doing it to that you start with your upper chest. So you kind of have to train yourself to wait. Nope, I need to be breathing from my diaphragm. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when do you recommend we practice these uh you know, breathing exercises, like, should we do it in the morning? Should we do it at night? Or should we do it like any time we feel stressed in like in the moment? Or what do you recommend? I think any time is a good time. <laughs> so in the morning, I think it's good just to kind of get ready for the day to kind of focus and, you know, get started in the day. Um, at night, it's good to just relax and get ready for bed. I feel like it's nice to do when you're like in that hour before I read or after I read just to kind of do a just a couple minutes of breathing exercises just to get me ready to go to sleep. And then of course, if you're feeling stressed and you just need to take a minute and do some breathing exercises, that's great. And I think it's nice too because it doesn't require a mat. You don't have to have any extra tools. You could be driving, you could be working at home, at your job, wherever, and you can do breathing exercises. So it doesn't take a lot of you know time out of your day and a whole setup or anything. You can just take even a minute or two is beneficial. Yeah, yeah. And I like um you know, when I was going through a time of like anxiety and everything, I remember like not being able to catch my breath or like holding my breath, you know, um, mm -hmm. like just holding my breath when really I should have been trying to do some of these exercises, like, you know, trying to um, breathe better and, and actually, you know, <clears throat> open up my diaphragm and like catch my breath instead of like, because I think holding your breath probably makes your anxiety worse. Wouldn't you say? It's true. Yeah. 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 And that's a sign of disordered breathing too, is holding your breath. So I think the first step is very important is just being aware of how you breathe period. And then you can work on fixing mm -hmm. it. But I think so many people aren't even aware of how they breathe. And I think that's the first thing just throughout your day, just kind of check in every now and then and just think, how am I breathing right now? And then we can notice mm -hmm. the patterns and maybe the bad habits that we have and work on trying to fix those um, bad habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the first things that like I started noticing in myself um, like several years ago was that I was a mouth breather. And so I've really tried to, in the mm. last few years, tried to start breathing through my nose more, like inhale and exhale. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because, you know, and you like, know what's I beneficial. read that. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And I was going to say, like, ahead, what's you. something that is really helpful with that, that might sound crazy, is mouth taping. And, so, and yeah. what you do is just um, use the, people think like, <laughs> I think people's first reaction is like duct tape. It's like, no, not duct tape, but like the three M <laughs> tape and just putting a strip yeah. <laughs> like across your lips because it forces you to breathe through your nose. And some people that might, you know, feel a little bit apprehensive about doing that. Sometimes I'll recommend just do it for a few minutes during the day when you're at home. Just put it on for a few minutes and just see how you do. And then at night, tape your mouth and it forces you to breathe through your nose. And if you're a little bit apprehensive about it, you can also just leave like a little slit in it if you're just afraid, you know, that of what might happen. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, mouth taping is very helpful also. Yeah, I've heard of a lot of people doing that um, when they sleep mm -hmm. to, so they can train mm -hmm. their... Um, 
yeah. so, train themselves to breathe through their nose instead of their mouth. So, yeah, that's good. That's okay. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, my, my, um, uh huh. I was go ahead. I think my... we're, we're about to be delayed. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, there is like a little a little delay. Yeah. I was just going to say that my father, yeah. who's on a CPAP, has sleep apnea, and he started mouth taping, and he said that he felt so much better. Like, he felt like he actually got a good night's sleep. It felt even better. Like, he said a CPAP for a long time, but he felt that mouth taping really helped him have even better sleep. So, it definitely works. Yeah, and it's something so simple that you can do, you know, it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, just tape your mouth at night and, and um, you know, you can start to train yourself to breathe through your nose. So, yeah, I like that tip. Yeah. Well, that's all my questions, Kia. Do you have any, like, last um and like a few minutes of advice or like anything that you want to say um, to the viewers, any, anything, any tips, any advice? Um, I guess I would just say the importance of, you know, especially during this time with the, you know, with the pandemic that we've been going through and that it's just so important for everyone to take time out for themselves to take care of themselves health wise. So, you know, making sure that you're eating right, that you're exercising, that you're taking the time to breathe and, and uh, do what you can just uh, for better health, you know, so you can be a better mom, wife, single person, (laughs) whatever you are, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. So that you yeah. can just be happier and you know we all want to live long healthy lives so yeah make sure you take the time out for yourself and then also if you're interested or anybody wants to learn more they can reach me at kia k-i-a dot breathe at gmail.com yeah and we'll put that in the description below this uh video too so if anybody wants to learn more about you or um get in touch with you so well, I appreciate Perfect. it, Kia. Perfect. This was very interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think it's something different for my viewers too, um, for them to learn about. Because I know I'm always talking about nutrition and exercise and all that. So, you know, breathing is important too. Reducing stress is important too. So, um, I'm I'm glad you were able to come on and, um, you know, share this with us. So. Well, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I know you have been providing so much good information for everyone. And so just thank you for getting, you know, good information out there on health and how we can live better lives. So thanks for that. (laughs) Thank you, Kia. I I try, you know, it's like, you know, it's my passion and I just want, I want everyone to be healthier. So (laughs) that's why I do it. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, have a good rest of your day. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks so much.